This is going to be part two of the dry cooking methods. So we are still talking about dry cooking methods that utilize air and not oil. So let's talk about roasting and baking. Uh, so roasting and baking are both hot, dry air. Um, and essentially with roasting, you have these outer layers of heat and then the juices turn to steam and then that is ultimately kind of what cooks your food item. So the juices do end up creating a natural sauce if they don't all cook out. It depends on what food item, how fatty it is uh, and how long you cook it, how open it is or not. Um, fish, tender meats, poultry, uh, some fruits and vegetables are appropriate for roasting. Um, the, the way that you roast, kind of like we learned in lesson four, um, when you look at doing lid on versus lid off, you're going to kind of get different results. So I like my roasted potatoes to have a crispier crust and um, be a little drier, uh, kind of more like French fries or potato wedges. And so on that, I'll put them on a cookie sheet and they're kind of in the open air more. Uh, my husband likes them a little softer. And so I'll do the roasted potatoes in a in a pan with a lid, like a casserole dish with butter and stuff in it. And it, and just like we learned uh, before, when we're, we're looking at caramelization and the Maillard reaction. When you have that evaporation versus not that evaporation, you're going to get more browning. So if you use the lid with the with the pot with the lid, then you're going to have softer cooked uh, and a little bit less on the browning. In baking, uh, baking can also be covered, oh, excuse me, baking can also be covered or, or uncovered. Uh, typically get a little golden brown color on top. Uh, you might have some longer cooking times, but a lot of times baking is a little shorter. Uh, the food might be raised off of the cooking pan or it might be right on there. Um, you could baste if you're dealing with meat, you could you could baste things, get a little golden brown exterior, get a ten, tender interior. Um, when it comes to baking like um, dessert items, which we'll deal with when we cover that unit a little bit more specifically, but depending on what you're baking, if you're baking something directly on a pan, I use parchment paper a lot. Make sure that you don't cross wax paper and parchment paper. Wax paper is not designed to be used in the oven with heat. It'll basically melt down kind of like like candles or crayons will, but uh, silicone coated parchment paper is designed to use in the heat. You can't use it with broiling, however. The broiler is too hot, so that would be for baking. So if I'm making cookies, I like to use parchment paper, biscuits, or something like that, and that helps keep your bottom from getting quite so crispy on the bottom. Searing is a review of something that we have already covered in the class. So searing means to quickly brown on the outside. And lessons one through four, or two, two through four in this unit have really focused on how to get that, what you need to do, the preheating of the pan, um, cooking things appropriately, making sure that your oil is hot, what type of oil to use and whether or not to use a lid. So those are some things that we've already covered that I hope you have a good uh, a, a good foundation on. With griddling on a griddle, uh, the food is cooked directly on that hot flat surface. So there might be a tiny little amount of oil um, or the food item itself, like with bacon or sausage might create its own little bit of oil, but for the most part, you're not really adding very much oil to the griddle. So um, if you've ever been to a Waffle House or if you've ever gone to a, like a hibachi, like a Japanese steakhouse, and you've seen that big, hot, flat metal surface that they put the food directly on and cook the food directly on hot and fast, that would be an example of, of griddling. So hibachi is an example. There's a, a photograph here of like an electric griddle. I know uh, my grandma has one of those. Um, that she always used and she would do like pancakes on them. It's a great thing for cooking pancakes and stuff. So everything kind of gets a slightly crisp interior or exterior. Uh, it's good for steaks or chops or chicken breasts, um, pancakes, griddle cakes, bacon, eggs, uh, anything that's not too runny or too liquidy. So there's a, a, a photograph here of a hibachi grill if you've ne never had that experience. And we'll do sauteing 